Somebody gotta testify. Oh, somebody gotta testify. For God I live, for God I die. Somebody gonna testify. Somebody gonna testify. Oh, somebody gonna testify. For God I live. For God I die, somebody gonna testify. Hi, good morning, Auntie Pauline here again. So this morning, in place of my devotion online, I just want to testify of the love of God. I just want to testify what God has done for me, my family, and for you know, trust me, man. Sometimes we have to go through some real hard testing up in the heart of us to have a testimony. And I have been through some tests, you know, and that's why I can share my testimony this morning. So, this is, you know, no matter how the time is going, we are living a perilous time, but no matter how the time looks, dim, dark and dreary and hopeless. I still believe in the promises of Jesus. He said if we honor him, he will honor us. And I still believe in that. No matter what is happening, God is still in control. And no Mr. Devil, you know, I'm going to take off the title of him. No devil, no Satan, no Satan can cancel God's plan. No. It may look and it will seem as if he is overpowering, but God he have him at a hand length. And he can do more than what God allow him to do. So believe that. So whoever is going through their crucibles, crucibles right now, whatever you are going through right now, keep believing that God is able to pull you through. Yes? Some persons are going through some hard testing time because they are in need of money and they are in need of a job. But because they are Seventh-day Adventists, they can hardly get a job that will not that will not allow them to work on Sabbaths. And let me tell you something, man. That's what the devil is putting in front of us right now, right? That's what the devil is pointing to us that we have to work on the Lord's day. But when when God say we must honor him, we must honor him because he will make a way. The song say, he'll make a way where there seems there's no way. Of course, he will work it out. So don't give up, don't give in, God will work it out. And this morning I have a, it's a sort of lengthy testimony, but please bear with me, the victory is in the end. So please watch and listen until the end. This testimony is about when I was struggling, struggling with my kids. Everybody was going to school and I was struggling. And I always tell her that I was a single mother. Their fathers care less about them. So I have to take up the mantle. I have to stand up for them right along with the help of my parents but let me tell you something man when we were they were um young i was really i really have it my mother used to sell at the school gate and you know i go there sometimes and help her so during my struggle she she said you know what take it over i'm going to the farm i'm gonna stick to the farm so she stick to her farming, go to the market, and I was at the school gate. But trust me, if you see what the pan is tall, if you see what the pan is tall, pan is like a table where we have, that can um, support five children. So like a sweet, it's like a cheese chip. So like a sweet biscuit. Yes. And when the children come out lunchtime or break time and they sell I mean, and some bag juice, some, you know, then first time suck, suck, we make a bag juice, you know, and tie up in the poly bag them, freeze them and carry them up. And yes, when the children come out lunchtime or break time or lunchtime, after them buy, you know, because I wasn't the only person that is, um, and if me have not entice them, 
like when the other person have mm -mm, they now stop at me right so i get very little sale and when me sell what is there i give the children them to go to school the next day me not have nothing with no profit. Me not got back nothing for buy back nothing. So every day I dwindle down, dwindle down. And one day I tell us uh, the counselor for the hearer at that time. I met about, you know, the. What am I calling now? Late 80s. No. Both in the 90s, yes, the 90s. Mm -hmm. And the counselor, he was a PNP counselor at the time. And mark you, I'm not a politician, I'm not a political person, so I'm not talking politics here. I respect anybody who is in power. So that the counselor was, he came in the area, he know me by name. Because he always visited the area. And when you look at my stalling company and he say, they call me Chubby. Then Chubby, I want to see their fans, fans style they sell. They say, I'll make you see. You do something for me now. And he say, all right, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out. And that was it. I don't hear back from him. And every day, I have the two cheese chip that, that, that. Nothing. So, it so happens that Another day he came into the area and he the same thing when he looked on his stand and he said, hey, Chubby, how about that? He said, You asked me already. And you'll be telling you know, you know, do nothing. He said, No, yourself, man, we're going to do something for you. Promises, promises. You know, so go on and go on till during my struggle, 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 struggle. Sometimes I feel like giving up. Sometimes I feel like just Pack up the list, I'm in the box and I'm in a bag and go to my yard. Come in, I'm still coming like me a high glass on the roadside. I'm in a used to stuff on the roadside. Now. This whole part gossiping, this whole part talking, this whole part, and I'm in the penny, I'm in the get it. Right? I need money to help out the kids. Them. You know, so one day I see one young girl with a piece of paper. And she come over to me and said, the counselor asked her to get names of some young persons who want to, you know, go uh, want a job. But um, it's going to be, I think, this summer. For the summer, they're going to go on three weeks training. And to, oh, I understand it was like database. He, they're gonna train him for three weeks, and after the three weeks, they go and put him in a job. I mean, look, Pani, I say, boy. I say, anyways, put on my name. When I take the paper and I write on my name, I realize it was about 24 persons. I made it 24 persons. I mean, look, Pani, I say, but no, me are the only one up here, young people. Me are the only one, Pani. But I say, you know what? I mean, put on my name still. Anything or anything. The day came, I got a call, name and number, I got a call to go by, you know, Freeport to, for some interview or something at the start. But when all of us whose name was on the paper, not everybody went, but most, when they went and we go in one by one, some come out and say, they're not, they're not interested because they say, I know that they went tell them. They now go back and on school and re -re. But when I went in, I realized it was hard. It was hard trust in TA, yes? And it's, we have to go to school, to, to the training school at Kenilworth. And they have a variety of skills that they, um, they're going to train us. We have to pick our choice of skipping food and beverage, food preparation, front office, and um, clothing and textile, a lot of stuff. So one of my friends was, her name was Anit. I think she's a little bit older than me after we spoke about it and she put her name on it and because both of us were struggling and um, trying to get a job. So 
so so she put her name on it and we end up there and when we went in and the, the lady explained to us and tell us that we have to go through the six month training and after the training they will put us on um work experience and then maybe we have to find a job or if they have space wherever we go they will um take us most of them were young people and they turned back and said they're not going back to normal school because i were m1 and whatever and that was their plan and so some of us decided to give it a try my friend and i we decided to give it a try along with other persons they came for us to do some dexterity tests eye tests and stuff like that at the heart office in montego bay and when we went it ended up like about four of us out of the 24 and all uh, out of the four of us i was the only person who was successful i was the only person who was successful in that um i test so it's the grand finale now you know the big test to go to the the um, the entrance test now to go to the to heart in Kenny Lurett in Anova. Now, they gave us the date. We are to meet at the church downtown, Montego and Market Street. I think it's St. Paul's or something. And so I went now, me and my friend, because why she get a blind, I asked the person to help her out because um, she failed the itis, so she couldn't go do the entrances. So we were there jokingly, you know, and they put her on the list. They put her on the list and and she get the chance to do the entrance test. So you know, that is us, two of us, both of us went there. So she was saying to me that um, when you go inside, make we get a seat by her, beside each other and I must tell her what um, she don't know and you know help out each other. I said we'll see about that because I don't know if we will be allowed to talk in the exam and stuff like those. So nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, we um, when we go down there, the amount of people what we see we, we couldn't believe the amount of people. And so by when we go, the door was open, so we went upstairs and we take seat or seat and we sit beside each other as we planned you know because we plan to help out each other but when it was time to begin the invigilator came in the room and started to call names and when we hear finish show my name hand up downstairs so i could not help her out i did not get to sit beside her because we have our special seats so i have to go back downstairs where my place was Nevertheless, we did the test, maths, English, general studies, and stuff like those. And the time came for the result. And as you know, I was successful and she wasn't. So it ended up that it was now time for the other interview at the school itself. I went to the interview and trust me, it was very emotional because after the, during the interview, some questions that were asked, I didn't know that we were going to ask those questions, personal questions and stuff like those. And after being interviewed, the interviewer said like, um, shouldn't advise me to um, start the course because in my situation, I need a job right away which that's what I wanted. But where am I going to get a job? I did a lot of interviews. I passed all of them. I did a lot of tests, written tests. I passed all of them, only to know that on the application, you have to write what skill you want. And I didn't have a skill because I didn't have a certificate to show. I didn't go anywhere to train, and that's what they wanted. And most of them, too, why I didn't get it because I am a Seventh-day Adventist and I don't, I'm not willing to work on Saturdays. So those are two of my downfalls. I don't have a skill and they said you can't write anything on the paper. What skill here you want? Anything available. No job, no name, anything. They want a specific. No, what, what am I going to write? So she was telling me that I needed a job right away. 
she understands my flight, flight and stuff like those. But those kids need me and they need my assistance, they need my help and stuff like those. So I need a job right away. I said, but nevertheless, they said, it's up to you if you want to go through the, um, the course. I reconsider it and, you know, I took the letter, I went home and I reconsidered it and I did it necessary. I go through the course to the six months in, in housekeeping and trust me, I stopped one time and because I had a terrible toothache and I need to get it out. I went to the dentist that day, got it out with the intention to go to school half day but it was hurting so bad so I have to go home and out of the six months that's the only time I absent and how did I make it? My brother had a bus on the road. I'm supposed to reach class eight o'clock so I'm supposed to take the I think nine o'clock um, how did it go? But anyways, I was on the second, I was supposed to go on the second shift. So what I did, in order to get the free drive, I come, came down early. Yes, I took the, my brother came down by, um, leave by six o'clock. I came with him. I took the seven o'clock bus that took us to school. That bus, I should not take that bus. I should take the eight o'clock bus, but I took the seven o'clock bus that took us to school and I sit in the cafeteria every morning until my class time I sat in the class and that's what I did for the entire six months and when I am going home back I wait on the bus and I so most of the time I reach home night because I always meet up with my brother who take me home back you understand but that's how I ended up, ended up um, struggling out. Now, um, let me go back. The counselor who sent out that form, he did not know that anybody, because he did not get any response. As soon as I leave the interview in Kenilworth, I go straight to the parish council where his office was, and I went in, and I... And when he, was, he saw me, he called me by name and said, what's up now? I said, you sent me to school. I came, I am here for uniform. <laughs> I came, I'm here for uniform money. And he was astonished. He said, what are you talking about? I said, that paper where you sent around, said, people feel, um, put on your name, who want go do, learn skill or whatever. He said, so what? Uh, he was surprised. He was clueless because he didn't know that anybody attempted. I said, yes. And when he heard that I was the only person and I was the oldest because when I go to Kenilworth, I was 33 years old. I was the eldest person in my class. All the others were 17, just leaving school, 17, 18, 20, 21, 23. That those age, I was 33 years old among these in, persons in my class. And he was so excited when I told him that, yes, I did go through it. And he was like, he pushes that in his pocket, same time I said, buy what this can buy. I bought the uniform. Yes. He, he was, even though when he saw me, he said, he called me, he said, Chubby, I like your success story. Yes, man. I stood out and I went through the, the, the course. I graduated. I got my certificate for level one. Yes. And now it was time for the job. <laughs> and that's another story. Let me tell you something. It's a lengthy inter um, testimony. But I want you to listen to it because the struggle has just started. Getting through, it has just started. It doesn't end the year. It doesn't just end right here. It's been a struggle. But I'm going to let you know what took place in another video because this one is too long. I'm going to do a part two, all right? So just listen out for the success story of my interview, all right?
Somebody gotta testify. Oh, 